There comes a time when all life on earth is in danger. At that time, great powers have arisen, barbarian powers. And although they waste their wealth in preparations to annihilate each other, they have much in common. And among the things these powers, these la le, it's called barbarian powers, have in common are weapons of unfathomable devastation and death and technologies that lay waste the world. And it is just at this point in our history when the future of all beings seems to hang by the frailest of threads that the kingdom of Shambhala emerges. Now you can't go there because it is not a place. It exists in the hearts and minds of the Shambhala warriors. And actually, you can't tell a Shambhala warrior by looking at her or him because they wear no uniforms, no insignia, they wield no banners, they have no barricades upon which to climb to threaten the enemy or behind which they can rest and regroup. They don't even have any home turf. The Shambhala warriors have only the terrain of the barbarian powers to move across, to act upon. Now the time is coming, Dukutra Gyal Rinpoche said to me, when great courage is required of the Shambhala warriors, moral courage and physical courage. And that's because they are going to go right into the heart of the barbarian powers to dismantle their weapons. They're going to go into the pits and citadels where the weapons are made and deployed. They're going to go into the corridors of power where the decisions are made to dismantle the weapons in every sense of the word. Shambhala warriors know that these weapons can be dismantled because they are mano maya. That means mind made. Made by the human mind, they can be unmade by the human mind. Because the dangers that face us are not brought upon us by some satanic deity or some evil extraterrestrial force or some unchangeable preordained fate. They arise out of our relationships and habits, out of our priorities. They are made by the human mind. They can be unmade by the human mind. So, he said, now is the time the Shambhala warriors go into training. How do they train? I asked. They train in the use of two implements, he said. Actually used the word weapons. What are they, I asked. And he said, one is compassion, and the other is insight into the radical interdependence of all phenomena. And you need both, he said. You need the compassion because that provides the fuel to move you out where you need to be, to do what you need to do. And it means not being afraid of the suffering of your world. And when you're not afraid to be with that pain, then nothing can stop you. You can be and do what you're meant to do. But by itself, he said, that implement is very hot. It can burn you out. So you need the other. That other tool, the insight 
into the radical interconnectivity at the heart of existence. The web of life, our deep ecology. When you have that, you know, he said, when you understand that, then you know that this is not a battle between good guys and bad guys. You know that the line between good and evil runs through the landscape of every human heart. And you know that we are so interwoven in the web of life that even the smallest act with clear intention has repercussions through the whole web beyond your capacity to see. But that's kind of cool, he said. It's maybe even a little abstract. So you need the heat of the compassion. That's the prophecy. <laughs>